One time, one time I, I got arrested with a, a, a decent size, maybe it was a little, a little less than 12, maybe eight people, I can't remember. Um, it was an anti section, but that's irrelevant. But um, we, it was just something I didn't expect. You know, I had been arrested a number of times for civil disobedience, I'd gone through the whole processing and all these different jails, uh, which is not fun. But, you know, you get used to it and you deal with it. Um, and I'd never been strip searched. I thought, I thought it never crossed my mind, but, you know, when people get arrested, a lot of times they do strip search them. Like, even if it's, you know, especially if it's not a political case. You know, if they think the person might have drugs, might be smuggling drugs into the jail, um, they'll, they'll strip search people. And uh, at that time, my brother was arrested for that one, too, and we were all in the holding center after we had been searched. And, uh, and he came in kind of uh, probably last. He had a lot of hair. And uh, he kept it back in like a ponytail or whatever. And uh, he came in and it was all like poofed out. And, and I remember my our friend Josh, uh, Harper, who was in that one too, and he was like, oh, and then my brother's name is Josh. He said, oh, Josh, they searched your hair. And it was funny, you know, because his hair was all out. And they had like picked through all his hair and like looking for, I don't know, the drugs that these activists might have. And it was ridiculous. But, um, you know, it was, it, was an it, you know, it was an embarrassing situation, potentially. You're standing there with all these people that are your friends, and they, it, we were all in the same room, which is another thing that's uncommon. We were, they had us all in the same room, uh, strip searching us all at the same time, which is kind of like an awkward thing that I think if some people had more hangers or issues or, uh, or just anyone for any reason, they, you don't want to do that, right? This doesn't sound like the kind of thing you want to do. So, you know, you want to be aware that, like, when you, you do get arrested, that's a possibility. These people might want to do that kind of thing, um, and you might end up having to go through with that. And the point of being prepared is to be able to come out the other side and continue to be active. Continue to be, because a lot of times in, the, in a civil disobedience action, people get arrested, and it's almost like, uh, what's that, uh, kill them all in that God's sort of type of philosophy. It's like um, a certain percentage of people who get arrested one time for protests or civil disobedience will keep coming back and keep doing it. And then, uh, the rest of the percentage would probably never do it again because it's 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 a galvanizing situation one way or the other. Um, so yeah, the strip search is one thing. Another thing, I did a I did a um, banner hang off the Washington Monument, which is that giant thing in Washington D.C. It's like a giant ballast type thing in Washington D.C. And um, we climbed up there and hung, hung a banner off it. And uh, you know, we were that was actually the last civil disobedience I ever did, which is another thing I should mention. I haven't done it since 1999. That was the last time, summer in 99. At that point, I, was, I told myself I was done with it. It wasn't like an effective use my energy at that point, in my opinion. But it, I do think it's a very important aspect of the movement, um, and I think that we don't have enough of it going on right now at all, nowhere near enough. At that time, there was a lot going on, so it was a different perspective I was having. But, um, so I climbed up on this, on this thing with two other people, and we hung a banner, and it was very high up and scary. Um, I'm not necessarily afraid of heights, but I could totally understand how even someone who's not afraid of heights could be afraid of that being hundreds of feet up. Um, you know. You're talking about the outside of the room? Yeah, it has scaffolding on it. Oh. Sca people know what scaffolding was. It's like that pole, those poles, they, they were working on the building, so it was surrounded by this like giant ladder type thing. Um, so we hung this banner off there, and uh, this, these cops came and they were parks police. And I've been arrested by all kinds of police, but mostly just, you know, local municipality police, regular cops. Uh, but, you know, we're in a, we're in a, I think it's a national park. So they were like parks police. And um, they climbed up there and the cop that was arresting me was afraid of heights. He was, he's got to do his job. He's like hundreds of feet up in the air. He's armed because it's close to the White House and all this kind of stuff, which I didn't really think of. I mean, they're all armed, right? But they don't usually draw their arms. So, um, with protesters, non-violent protesters. So, I'm out, like, hanging over there, handcuffed to the scaffolding, big banner drop, a lot of wind, a lot of craziness, and this cop's like, come back in here! You know, he was scared, he was shaking with his gun drawn at me, and I can't even come if I want to because I'm ha I already handcuffed myself to this thing. And, um, he wet himself. I mean, he was scared. And that made the whole situation a lot more dangerous than what we had anticipated. Um, 
And it made, you know, so that was one thing. And then we get dragged down the scaffolding because we were, we were going limp, um, which is a choice a lot of people make to not comply by walking. You know, they make them carry you off the jail instead of just walking with them voluntarily, like participating in you know, this. So um, we essentially got dragged down, I don't know how many flights, 300 feet full of flights of metal great stairs, and kicked down. Partially. So I was all bruised and beat, you know, scraped up. Um, and then when we got down to the bottom, they had they were working on this monument. So they had like a 15, 12 foot high just plywood wall, so that people couldn't get into the construction area where tools won't be falling. And that's where they dragged us down to afterwards. So as soon as we got down there and out of the view of the hundreds of protesters that were at this demonstration, we just the three of us just got beat, just relentlessly for like 10, 15 minutes, kicked. You know, we were like curled up and butt just getting kicked by the cops because they were pissed that they had to come out there and do this thing and be made an ass of, and it was our fault. Uh, and because they had impunity at that moment even more than they normally had. Uh, and that was something I wasn't expecting. So this one arrest is the only one I'll talk about at the moment. But, um, but those are a couple things that I just out of that that I wasn't expecting. And then on top of it, once we got arrested there, we, you know, you normally get taken into the holding facility and processed through a, a series of rooms that are intended to confuse you and disorient you until you get put in a cell and then you get taken to your arraignment where you see a judge and potentially released or not released. And a whole bunch of nonsense goes on in that stage that you need to be prepared for too. But before we even got there during this arrest, they took us to another building, a special room. Um, and what do they call it? Um, Secret Service. Secret Service came and interviewed us for four hours each. And that was because, again, we were like near the Washington Monument. We had, that, I was unprepared for that. Um, I did not think that I would be interviewed by the Secret Service because they thought maybe we were climbing the monument to like snipe at a, at a political figure or something like that. But that was protocol during that particular, you know, at that particular situation. I had no idea. So we went through this like interrogation by Secret Service for a long time before we even then got processed in the jail. And then when we got into DC Central Cell, which is a bad, the worst one I've been in, all they fed us was glazed donuts and Kool-Aid. You couldn't even get regular water. It's Kool-Aid and glazed donuts for seven days um, before I saw my arraignment. So those were just things that, like, at that particular arrest, I wasn't really prepared to deal with that. Um, and one of the three of us came out of that saying he was never going to go, never going to do civil disobedience again. Um, which, on a happy note, uh, he ended up being very involved in Sea Shepherd. And, uh, and being very active and ridiculous again, but still, it was a terrifying experience for him. So, um, the, just want to keep it short. I just want to say that, like, you want to think about, you know, don't don't think that you're going to always be afforded the privileges of the nonviolent, like, activist white protester person or whatever that you that you you know that you've heard about. Because depending on your situation, you might be treated like you know, you might not come out of the jail alive. I mean, there's there's the Erie County holding facility in New York, where I'm from, in Buffalo, uh, they have an enormously high suicide rate, suicide rate within the jail, and a lot of these are not nice places. Uh, there's beatings there all the time for people who aren't political, who have nothing to do with politics, let alone people who stand for something. So these jails, um, it's not a picnic, it's not this and that, but, you know, it might be kind of decent, and you might even have a good experience at one facility, and then you might end up at another facility that's a complete nightmare. So um, think about that and be prepared. Uh, to go off of that, uh, I think it's really important, you know, to to know that um, you know civil disobedience um, and organizing a campaign. A lot of people don't take the time. They think that they, they see something Martin Luther King did. They grab a poster. They get a banner, and then they go out there and start yelling or you know handing out. But it is a professional, you know, strategy. You know, like you got to do your research, you got to do your work, you got to talk to people that have been doing it for some time. Um, and I wish I had more mentors. Um, and you try to find a mentor, but a mentor that you know is willing to be challenged, not somebody that thinks they know it all. Um, and so, uh, and then you know, try to find different people that you know you can tell them, hey, I want to be mentored, I want to, I want to learn things, and. Uh, when I was 19, 20 years old, I thought I knew it all. I was like, you know, revolution is tomorrow, um, you know, and, you know, I was thinking, like, how can we close down?